starting live event. I Sorry, swear guys. God, exploit. I swear. Please tell me. That's good. All right. This appears, appears to tell us that we're live. Ah. Uh. All right, I'm I'm waiting. I'm gonna wait though. I don't believe it. I don't believe that we're actually live on YouTube yet no. until I see that we're live on YouTube. Oh, it's starting. Oh, thank God. Okay. okay. Oh. This. There it is. There it is. Hi everyone. Welcome to Awesome Hardware. Sorry for the bit of lag getting the second half of today's show up and running. YouTube, like, Worth it. I I accept no responsibility. It was 100% YouTube. <laughs> yeah. We streamed the whole really thing on was. Twitch and showed people that. So uh, thankfully, it caught up. So we are live on YouTube again. Oh uh, yeah. Thanks for waiting around for those of you guys who are watching us live. But a quick explanation for those of you who are watching in the future. This is Awesome Hardware. It's a live show. We talk about technology, computers, and we stream every Tuesday evening at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time to twitch.tv slash awesomehardware if you want to watch the whole show. Uh, the actual show is split in half, and we also stream to our YouTube channel. So the first half of today's episode, number 170, was streamed to Kyle's channel, Bitwit. It was. And that's linked in the video's description. If you haven't watched it yet, feel free to go and do that. Apologies again for being late, but uh, we have a few announcements. To Super late, with. but worth the wait. That should be yeah. our motto. Yeah. Oh, always. Always late. Always. But worth the wait. Worth the wait. I think, yeah. Um, oh, but what? Dude, it's a great t-shirt idea. Awesome hardware. Always late, worth the wait. We can do that. That could, that Sorry. could be in the future. That'll happen. Carry on. Point being, though, uh, we have a couple quick announcements. One is that we have a giveaway going on right now. Uh, this was actually coordinated by our friend Brian, a.k.a. BPS Customs. Brian! So if you guys are interested in uh, participating in that giveaway, go to my channel or Kyle's channel or Brian's channel, which is BPS Customs, and watch the video, and there's a link to the Gleam.io entry in there, and you can enter the giveaway. It says there's zero entries. It's an excellent giveaway. Everyone should participate. It still says zero entries. What? No. That's weird. That's the internet. Gle Gleam's, Gleam's kind of dropping the ball on this one. I don't one. know what's wrong with Gleam. Anyway, point being, there's 21 different prizes you can win. <sighs> so everyone go and enter the giveaway, and you will be happy. Super happy. You uh, might win something. It's only on for a week, too, so you've, you've got a limited time to do so. Also, do it secondary now. announcement. Uh, Kyle and I are going to be having a fan meetup. It's going to be brief and everything, so nobody go out of your way. But if you're in the Southern California area, specifically LA, Orange County, maybe Riverside. I mean, it's a little bit further away. but um, Especially if you joined us last year, because we're going to be doing pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Uh, then stay tuned. Follow us on Twitter. We'll be announcing a little bit closer to this weekend uh, some more of the specifics as far as where, where we're meeting and when. But it's going to be on Saturday the 1st of December. So if you're in the area, feel free to join us. That'll be cool. Yeah. Uh, that's all for announcements. Quick plug of our stores. If you guys want to uh, buy some nice merch and also help support our channels, check out our stores. My store is paulsarbor.net. Uh, sale going on right now for, for the holidays. If you spend over 50 bucks, you get 10% off. If you spend over 100 bucks, you get 20% off. That's a great deal. We also have a couple new designs that have uh, just gone out. The, um, excuse me, the Robo Love design, which was designed by Jay Ted, is now available on some, uh, some, some desk mats, some mouse mats. Yeah. It's a really cool design. That's available e now. Exploded view of a, of a whole PC build. Indeed. We do like that design. Uh, of course, other shirts, mugs, and pint glasses also available. Oh, look, you can get a, gi a gift card. For your friends and family. You can get a gift card. Uh, Kyle's... Uh, store is bitwit.tech slash store. He has the new 8-Bit Boy, uh, which is also a fan design. Yeah, fan-made. and uh, Kyle looking like an 8-Bit dude. This is a submission that door. Wifey Sauce and I looked at and we're like, we need to put this on every piece of merchandise we can. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we haven't yet, but it's on mouse pads right now. Mouse pads. And, uh, and hoodies. Hoodies. It's, it's super sweet. Oh, and, oh mugs. and mugs. And mugs, yes. of course. Oh, look, that's cool. Get two mugs, and you can make it, make, set them up put like them, that. Put them next to each other. That's brilliant. That's, that's awesome. Well done. Uh, thanks to all you guys who buy stuff during the show, and we will be doing an after party once we finish, finish my half, um, where we get super casual, and we will shout out your name super during that part. Cash. Speaking of super casual, we also drink beer on the show. We occasionally oh. use adult language, so please hide your wife and kids. Uh, also, I have dogs, and every once in a while, they get mad. Or happy that your wife's home, because you just arrived. Or happy that my wife's home, which is what just happened. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Let's right. dive into some more tech news. Let's do it. Which, uh, wait, we got this? Yeah, there we go. Um, first story here. We have to scroll. Scroll. Scroll for uh, your life. This is from WCCFTech.com. Hello. Welcome home. Welcome home, lovely wife. <laughs> um, AMD's CTO, Mark Papermaster, was, was doing some discussion. So uh, Hassan over at WCCF Tech wrote up a little story on it. We've talked about Zen and the upcoming Zen products from AMD. Uh, we're, we're somewhat excited about it about them because they're going to be based on TSMC's 7 nanometer plus EUV process node. EUV is extreme ultraviolet lithography. Um, and there's reason to be excited because, for one, Intel has been promising 10 nanometer for like forever and they keep dragging their feet and we're not expecting it until like the later half of 2019. AMD dropping 7 nanometer in there is pretty cool because we should expect some uh, performance improvement. We should expect some efi efficiency. We should expect products based on this uh, new process or more refined process to potentially run at higher frequencies as well. Um, still not a whole lot of details on it, but there are products starting to trickle out. Um, the first product that will be available that's based on the 7 nanometer is a Vega 20 card, the Instinct MI60, which is a graphics accelerator, uh, and that will be shipping theoretically by the end of the year. Later this year, given that there's only about one month left in the year, that's pretty soon. What do they mean by uh, graphics accelerator? It's their artificial intelligence and machine learning GPUs. That's hmm. the same thing that they did Hmm. Um, with Vega, when it launched, they initially launched the Frontier, Frontier Edition, whatever you know. You remember that blue one, right? And that was specifically designed for um, for machine learning, AI AI tasks, right? Um, there's not a huge amount of difference between them. I think it's mainly a, a driver uh, difference uh, as far as what they're capable of. But starting off with those cards, they tend to sell for a lot more for one. Sure. Um, but also, there's a more uh, is there a more limited market for it? So I feel like it's the type professional of professional. They can type they can launch market. it. They can get some cards out into the in, into the market that people start using, and then I would imagine that they're a potentially able to catch issues um, before they go with like a full broad uh, mainstream G, gaming GPU launch. Right. Which we are uh, expecting seven nanometer sure. GPUs based on. But um, again, there's still very limited information about that. So, um, but cool that they're actually getting products out there. Now, there is a roadmap that AMD has published now. Again, there's only this small picture in the article, which goes up to Roman Zen 4. But according to the article, we've actually been promised not just Zen 2, uh, but also Zen 3, Zen 4, and Zen 5. Four. Oh wait! No, oh, Zen oh, Five. Oh, oh, five Zen, nice Zen Five there. also included. Not in this particular little cool. little image here. Nice. But Zen Five has been discussed. Okay. There is an article linked in this article, specifically talking about Zen Five. This is actually from April of this year, because um, they did some really early discussion of it. But um, it, you know, it's just it's AMD. They have a roadmap. They have stuff they're working on. That's all good. You have to plan. You have to do. You have to plan for the long game when it comes to CPU. Um, manufacturing and development. Um, but Mark Papermaster did unveil what to expect from Zen 3. Now Zen 2, if, 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 you, if you're following AMD over the past couple years, Zen originally was 14 nanometer, original Zen. Then they did Zen Plus, which was a slight refinement. Mostly the same architecture, shrunk down a little bit from 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer. Mm -hmm. Got a little bit of performance improvement. It was nice, but it wasn't like a massive difference. Right. It wasn't a huge shift or anything. Sure. Zen 2 should be a bigger difference because right. it's a, they, they are... It's a talk. They're, they're readdressing the, the architecture, kind right. of a little bit more of a ground-up redesign, and, again, jumping from 12 down to 7, uh, which is a pretty big jump. Sure. Now, when we talk Zen 2 to Zen 3, that's more like Zen to Zen Plus, Zen 2 to Zen 3. So uh, they said you should expect better power efficiency with modest performance gains with Zen 3. Given that we don't even have any Zen 2 products to really test yet, this is pretty forward-looking. Sure. But, you know, good so to know what, what AMD has in mind. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it seems like maybe the Zen, Zen Plus thing. I mean, I don't, I kind of don't mind Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, Zen 2 Plus. Like, that would, that would kind of work for me. Right. It would indicate that we're still kind of on the same, we're kind of in the same family. We just have, like, a slight improvement. Right. Versus Zen 2 to Zen 3. 
Um, I mean, we could we could go on ad nauseum about manufacturers and their naming conventions for their products, but um, good to know they they've at least got it uh, got it on the roadmap. Speaking of the roadmap, the article does have a chart here, which I thought was fairly interesting to look at if you're interested in this type of thing. Uh, years down here at the bottom, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. You can see right now, we've got Threader Pro 2000 series, Ryzen 2000 series. In 2019, we're expecting Zen 2, of course, 7 nanometer. And the first products that are going to launch based on 7 nanometer Zen 2 are Epic Rome chips, uh, which are made for servers. Those are going to have 64 th uh, cores and 128 threads. It's pretty insane. Uh, from the high-end desktop, we'll have Ryzen Threader for 3000 series, aka Castle Peak. These are theoretically, again, there's a question mark here, so this is just WCCF Tech theorizing, 32 cores and 64 threads, because that's what's currently available on uh, Threader for 2000 series. Uh, then we'll have Ryzen 3000 series for the mainstream desktop AM4 platform uh, that's codenamed Matisse. Matisse. Maybe there'll be 12 core or 16 core versions of Woo! Matisse. We, we don't really know for sure. Nice. Um, on, the AM, on the APU side, we have 3000 series Picasso, um, which again, there's still some questions about whether that's gonna be actual uh, Zen 2 or whether it's gonna be kind of a refresh of Zen Plus. But all that stuff's expected in 2019. And then in 2020, we got the 4000 series Zen 3, seven nanometer plus. Uh, Epic Milan is the code name for that. No, no code name for Threader for 4000 series yet. 4000 series on desktop is Vermeer, Vermeer. and 4000 series on APU is Renoir. Renoir. Uh, so there you go. Exciting. Code, code names and secret secret information. Of course. Shared with you here. It's exciting. A uh, little bit more details on AMD's upcoming stuff. This is a har hot hardware article. All of my articles are linked in the video description, by the way, if you guys want to check them out. And this is Lisa Sue holding up the uh, the the Rome Epic CPUs. So, uh, have you seen have you seen this? The the, the sixty four core. This uh, yeah, this is the sixty four core. Things insane. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna like blow this picture way up. <laughs> Hi Lisa. Okay, there it is. All right. So these little chips here are the new Ryzen cores. Right. So if you're familiar with the the existing Ryzen the core, eight like each, from, eight yeah, eight cores on eight, each eight one. cores, sixteen threads. Sure. This is basically the same thing just seven nanometer right. and eight cores and 16 threads each. Yep. So you can see on the Epic, mm -hmm. they have this central piece here, which is actually, I believe, still on 12 nanometer or 14 nanometer, um, which is a, eh, what's that called? It's an IO controller die, which is still based on 14 nanometer manufacturing process. So um, this is just a little bit more information specifically about uh, the next generation Epic processor process, the first, <laughs> the first products uh, on the CPU side based on the 7 nanometer process uh, that AMD is going to be coming out with. And the reason this article is posted is specifically because of the SISOF Sandra database entry, um, which seems to indicate potentially, maybe, that there might be a significant increase in the L3 cache on these processors. Um, hmm. Now, beyond, That's cool. beyond that, they are expecting increased instructions per clock throughput and a big overall performance lift uh, versus the 12 nanometer and 14 nanometer products. Um, oh, that's weird. It came back. All right, chat disappeared for a second. Did you see that? No. We were, uh, just like this whole thing went blank. For what? It was gone for a second. I was like, wait, did we stop streaming or something? God damn it, Windows. It's very weird. It's probably Windows. But anyway, this uh, Sysoft Sandra database entry had, uh, had <clears throat> details, including uh, the L3 cache. Uh, so the cache allotment on this entry shows 512 kilobytes of dedicated L2 cache per core, and then 16 by 16 megabytes, so 16, 16 megabyte blocks of L3 cache. Damn. So if you look at a Ryzen 7 2700X uh, and, and that database entry on Sandra, you'll see two 8 megs blocks mm -hmm. of L3 cache. So each right. 2700X die has two eight meg blocks of L3 cache. Um, and then the, the Ryzen die is eight cores split into two CCX units, each with four cores. Right. So you end up with, uh, with, with the cache split between the two cores. Sure. But this might indicate doubling up of the cache 
is that you would then get 16 megs of L L3 cache per core, per CCX Jeez. even. Um, so so wow. that could be an indication of uh, the improved performance. Cache. I feel like cache is, is one of those things that CPU manufacturers are always trying to sort of fiddle with to try to get the exact right amount. I mean, right. more is always better. Sure. Because, I mean, if, if, you, if you consider the hierarchy of storage in a computer, you've got, like, your slowest storage is, like, a hard drive, and then you've got, like, uh, faster storage that's, like, an SSD. Right. And then you have fast right. system memory, right. um, which, is, which is volatile, so it's only active while you have power to it. Yeah. And then you have cache in the CPU itself, it's even faster than the system memory, and usually they have L M1, L2, L3. Right. So, point being, this may or may not actually be true because we're working with uh, early engineering samples of the process uh, processors. We're talking a third-party software, Sysoft Sandra's right. analysis of the hardware that was being used. But all that said, this entry was uh, for a 2P or a dual uh, dual socket AMD Roam Epic machine. Dual 64 core, 128 thread Epic processors. So, Jeez. 128 cores, 256 <laughs> threads in the machine. So nuts. Which is which is absolutely absurd. <laughs> uh, and just a few closers about this platform overall. It's going to support top end ROM CPUs. Uh, it will be socket compatible. The new ROM CPUs will be socket compatible with previous generation Epic platforms. Nice. But also will be socket compatible with upcoming Milan, the upcoming Milan server platform, which supports PCIe cool. Gen 4. Nice. That's, Damn. That's kind of mind-boggling to me because from my perspective, the PCI Express controller is part of the CPU in most modern CPUs. So to have one that's compatible with both mm. Gen 3 and Gen 4 right. is interesting. They're but, definitely um, over, over-engineering some shit yeah, right but there. I, I would, that's I would, super cool. I need to read a little bit more up on the details on that. Forwards and uh, backwards compatible. Yeah. So these Classic AMD. CPUs will be competing with Intel's Cascade Lake SP CPUs, which are supposed to still ship later this year. Remember when, AM when Intel was like, hey, we have a 28-core, 56-thread processor shipping by the end of the year. Is that still happening? Are we still... Are we holding them to that? For what? Sorry, I missed that. I was reading chat. What? In Intel's absurd Computex presentation where they did, oh. did the... Chiller unit on the that was that was a fluff presentation. Twenty eight core, fifty six thread processor. I'm not I'm not holding my breath. Okay. Yeah. They're, they they're just, still supposed to launch it by the end of the year, so we'll we'll see. It'll be disappointing. We'll see what actually happens. <laughs> All right, let's move on though. YouTube. YouTube will be removing all video annotations. On January. No, 15th. but I love annotations. Kyle? Said no one ever. Maybe some people like annotations. This is just some, this is like a public service announcement. Everyone should be aware of this. Annotations, okay. I will say annotations are useful. Uh, they still have a place. And I don't think they should remove them. They should just improve them. Because sometimes, like, you want to add a little annotation in your video so that people know, like, hey, like, there's an edit here. I, I had an additional note. Or I messed up. I wanted to say something that I, I couldn't put in post. And so here it is on the actual video player. But no, you got to put it now in the comments if, you, if you're going to make an annotation. And who reads the freaking comments? People, I put things, edits in the comments all the time. It says, hey, at 3 minutes and 15 seconds, I really said that word wrong. It's actually this word. No one reads that. I still have a, a thousand comments every day that says, hey, Kyle, you messed up on that word and you never corrected yourself. You're an idiot. I mean, granted, I'm still an idiot, but I did correct myself, and no one saw it because I didn't put it in a freaking annotation. And annotations still have a place in the world. I'm just trying to fight for equal rights for annotations. That's all. When you were when you were most enthusiastic in that little diatribe you just went on right now, mm -hmm. the, there would be a little red light on the on the soundboard when you would be like, "Bleh!" Like the, when you would do those, <laughs> it's like, "Hey!" It's like, "Hey!" Bleh! Like you know those. <laughs> yeah. Those those, notes. Yep. Of course. Anyway. I call them peak moments. So I'm monitoring, I'm monitoring the audio very diligently. Rip headphones for this show. Yep, good, good show. Um, no, Kyle's Kyle's pretty much summed it up. I mean, like I said, this is this is mostly just so you guys are aware because obviously it's going to be deeply impactful. If you aren't aware, the annotations editor for YouTube in general was discontinued back in May of 2017. So um, yes, it was. It's been well over a year. Um, that you haven't been able to add or modify any annotations on any video as it is. Right. They were just legacy annotations that were still there. Right. 
That's, that's all. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty much all there is to this story. Uh, annotations were replaced by end screens, end screens and that, cards that pop up and cards. Which um, are phenomenally better. Yeah, they look way. more professional and work on mobile devices. That was the big selling yeah. point for me. Mobile, mobile for Mobile sure. devices, cards, and everything works. Yes. Uh, and according to the article, cards and end screens generate seven times more clicks than annotations. Yeah, absolutely. So good riddance annotations for yeah. you. Because they the get only that cool th like, animation here's, here's that pops the only out thing all smoothly. That pops into my mind, and this is very abstract. It doesn't doesn't really. It's not really legit, but like. I feel like when annotations first came out, there was there were people who made videos that really used annotations to they the had fullest. Like, yeah, they had like choose your own adventure videos. And yeah, stuff like that, yes, that they were all kind of integrated into. Right, those videos are now going to be completely useless. Right, so yep. all of those like videos that were yep. made in like two thousand eight, <laughs> so, like, which people probably still watch all the time. <laughs> it's going to be very confusing for them without the annotations. I miss the anyway. choose your own. No, I don't. I don't, I don't actually miss it. All right. I'm going to skip the next story because I don't have good notes on it, and Stupid. I wanted to do a straw poll, and I didn't, so I'm disappointed with myself. Yeah, screw it. Let's move on to this story from The Verge. Do it. Uh, about LG with a 16-lens smartphone camera. That's right. What? There's a, there's, a, there's a little diagram. Oh, there's the one that looks like an insect. Of it right here. Yeah, it kind of looks like a... It just looks really an in, alien. An insect, I guess. Uh, alien. It, the sixteen. I have, a, I, have a, I have a link to the Verge in the video description. They have a link to where they got the story from, which is Let's Go Digital. Why? Why sixteen um, lenses? Well, obviously, Kyle. Every lens, every lens has you know a, a, some nuance and distinct. You know, like when they polish it, that has you know polish significant, it. Significant. What like this? This I don't understand. This graph here. This looks like it's, it's squishing the lenses in different ways. Okay. Anyway, the thing that always baffled me when they were talking about cameras with multiple lenses was like, does each lens have its own sensor, right? Because it's not just about the lens and the optical apparatus of capturing right. the light. It's the sensor itself. The sensor. The light eventually hits a sensor, and the sensor is very important. With digital cameras, the bigger the sensor, the better. Like, sure. The more detail and precision, and a better sensor can also be more sensitive to various color you know it can have better color depth just like a monitor yeah. does for better example as well performance and all that. the array here that's shown with this mirror or whatever what's also pointed out kind of seems to me to indicate that all of these lenses are situated over a single sensor and maybe huh. they all just hit a different part of it okay and maybe that's slightly helped by a lens so what's the benefit I don't, there i don't know i don't know this whole link this is in a different language so. <laughs> I can't, I can't read it. <laughs> we have no idea. <laughs> so we had to rely on the verge to, to translate it and, and, and everything. Should, should that be it. a segment that we do where all the articles are in a foreign language? It's a different language and we're like, we don't know we what just, it says. It's pure, purely it's speculative. A, this, could be, this could be revealing the deepest mysteries of life and what everyone <laughs> should do to live happy for the rest of, of the time, your time on this earth. But it's in German. But it's in German. <laughs> Or, or Swedish or something like that. <laughs> Get Debauer over here. All right. That's right. Yeah, Debauer can at least translate the German. Part. He knows. He knows the truth to happiness. Anyway, um, the secret. <laughs> yeah. So Sprite the goal of the multiple cameras seems to be offered to offer different angles on a scene using the perspective of the different lenses. Different so, angles. So is this the thing? Because you know, you know, Steve posted something on Facebook. He posted a picture of his cat or something. Where you could move your phone and sort of see the cat in like a three-dimensional, like yeah. it was just a very slight, it was a very slight uh, movement that you could make with the with the photo, but it allowed you to sort of like give this sort of like a so maybe that's what like, real life go view digital here is animating. So, see right? Which I don't really Man, see the this, point of. There's Winnie the Pooh here, uh, Xi Jinping also AKA, oh. and he's seen from different angles, Stupid. and uh, you put your thumb on his face, and then you can twist the face around. And now he's sad. Why do you need to do that? Who he's who's sad, demanding obviously. this feature? Because he's just he's a stupid bear. He's looking at you. You want to show? You want to teach him a lesson? Why? No. Obviously, it shouldn't be. A stupid bear should not be given any more attention than this. <laughs> he's just not more into how, how about this? How about how about this, Kyle? Does this does this explain mm. things any better to you? See, dude here. <laughs> I'll let, I'll let you explain. Kyle's going to explain this one. How the hell am I going to... 
Just just go with it, guys. Okay, just dude, right? dude standing there. Yeah. And then man fingering woman's face. <laughs> There's a dashed line around it. Just, just her head. What's the dashed line mean? He's, he's clearly, he's clearly highlighting her face, her, her head. Okay. And now he's making her hotter with a chick that has bigger boobs. Now you have a, a, a down here at the bottom. Uh huh. These are all the people whose soul you can trade her soul with. Yeah, you trade her with the, the yeah. hotter chick, the right there, the second one. So if you want her to be chaotic evil or something like that, you know. Sure, so chaotic evil out. is replaced with Instagram model. Yeah. And then once you swap out Instagram model. Changes that in. That, that black bar there is the man's happiness. Like, he is now happier that he's with the Instagram model. I mean, he's model. happy enough. We don't want him to be too happy. Sure, he's not overloaded. I mean, he's like. static. You know, she's maybe top 20, not top 5. And then, and then the last one. And then this last one, obviously. <laughs> it's just... Obviously what's going on with this last image here, <laughs> which is very related to these other images. The last image is just art. And now you uh, reflect on your decision of, know. did you make the right choice? I understand. Picking the hot Instagram model? Or should you have stuck <laughs> with the original girl who didn't have a frame cut around her head? Yeah. Let's, let's move on to something a little bit lighter here. This uh, is so weird <laughs> Chinese, <laughs> Chinese scientists have uh, have created gene-edited babies. Yes, this is an exclusive from the MIT Technology Review. Okay. Chinese scientists creating CRISPR babies. Exactly. CRISPR. CRISPR babies. Were they not crisp enough, Paul? That's what I think is funny when you talk about CRISPR babies. It sounds like wow, they're really like they're golden, they're golden brown, golden and, brown. and delicious. They're ready. Uh, Get them out of that oven. Sounds <laughs> sounds great. All right, so here's this they're perfect. Dude. He Jen Kui. He Jen Kui. Um, he's got a video. Check that out. Kui? Wait, no, that's an AP. Sorry, I clicked the wrong link. That was the AP report. Here's his video. <laughs> so, um, I want duck sauce. <laughs> so basically, Maybe. this this Chinese scientist has gone rogue. Okay. He has used CRISPR, which is a gene editor. Sure. It's been around for some time, but sure. a lot of people have been like, "Wow." You could use this on people, but then everyone sure. is like, "Well, that would be, raise a bunch of like ethical questions of like how it should be appropriately used, and we don't know what the outcome could be, and modifying our genes might have results that we don't foresee because we don't fully understand it." Anyway, this guy was like, "Fuck all that! I'm gonna make two twin girls that are HIV resistant." Huh? Yeah. Huh? Okay. So, um, Who wouldn't want that? So this is his video explaining it, uh, how, he, how he made these girls. And don't worry, guys, I've already scrolled through the whole thing. There's no actual pictures of the girls themselves. I was imagining they would be superhero. They would probably look like superheroes. That's what I'm figuring. They'd come out with capes. Crisp, of gene-edited babies. Crisp capes. Made very crisp, very crisp, crisp capes. Crisp capes. Crisp capes. They'd be cosplaying um, crisp capes. But yeah, obviously this is thrown our entire... Uh, like our entire moral perspective of the world into shambles. Uh, we don't know what's right and what's wrong anymore. Hmm. And the fact that China did this first is actually kind of good. I mean, if you're looking at this from like like the U.S. perspective, right? They've kind of taken the the brunt of the uh, ethical complaints here, right? There's sure. a bunch of people like, oh my gosh. You can't do this. Right. You're playing God and a bunch of stuff like that. Oh, thank God they did it first. They but can normalize they're, yeah, it. They, they're, we'll just pick it up once it's all that. fine. It's like, well, they already did it. Like, we got to do it too now. Sure. Obviously. Sure. More on that in just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Are we advocating for this now? No. I try, I try to do a, I try to do a smooth, easy segue into a sponsor spot. Oh God! I'm just realizing, like, maybe our sponsors don't want to be sandwiched in between gene edited babies. The speed at which Never this mind. technology Never is mind. the speed at which this technology is evolving is unprecedented. Speaking of speed, also, have I you have, heard about the good news of Toshiba OCZ I, SSDs? I, I haven't fixed this yet. Okay. okay. Oh crap! Whoa. We tipsy, oh, bro. I've never done that before. That's amazing. I didn't oh. even know you could do that. Wow. Hold on a sec, guys. Sorry. Every day. Every day we're learning. Every day we learn. Copy that. <laughs> Sponsor spot. Paste. <laughs> there it is. There we are. Device not available. Uh, stop it. Come Crispy back. bacon. Where's F, the... F, 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 oh, here we go. I got I to gotta update the file. RTX is off. <laughs> <laughs> 
awesome hardware. Lower thirds. Wait, we've got this. Sponsor. You son of a bitch. Sponsor. Toshiba. You oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Toshiba. Toshiba. Okay. Toshiba. Don't do that. No, I can't do that. It's what so if, satisfying. What if what if our Toshiba rep is like asked to take this clip and send it to like their like whoever be like, hey, here's here's the <laughs> our ad, here's, here's the ad that I paid for, and that starts out with you. Then they saying Toshiba in a very. Then they'd have to say this is the most enthusiastic anyone has You're ever said enthusiastic. our company I name. I appreciate Kyle's enthusiasm for to Toshiba. And it was the brand. most memorable time anyone's ever said our company name. True. Also, we've already really screwed up the Toshiba ad integrations. So um, <laughs> this is why we, we make, this is we why we make that, the big bucks. We don't bucks. have that much hope that they're ever going to do this again. <laughs> Forget all that, though, guys. Forget all that. Forget everyone. Just clear your minds for just a moment. Clear your minds, okay? Let's just meditate. Everyone, meditate everyone on my calm words. Calm and rational. Meditate on my voice. This week's episode of Awesome Hardware is brought to you by Toshiba. <laughs> and Hero. And Hero, who's down there licking his body. He's looking. He's licking going crazy. Licking parts. Toshiba. <laughs> Uh, makers of fine products such as this XS700 external SSD, the TR200 internal 2.5 inch SSD, the, the RC100, RC100, which is a really cool little little tiny and adorable M.2 M.2 SSD. Yes. All of these products are based on BICS flash memory, uh, which Toshiba can produce uh, for reasonable prices, but is also quite fast. So you get a really nice balance of uh, reasonably priced products, fast SSDs. Everybody wins. Look how tiny it is. That's the RC100, which is super, super tiny. That's how tiny it is in my tiny hands. So guys, if you're interested, check out this video's description. I have links to some Toshi Toshiba products down there, and you can check them out. And a big thank you to Toshiba for sponsoring awesome hardware. Heck to the yeah. That was super legit, right? Heck to the yeah. Cool. All right. Excelente. In the meantime, getting back to those crisper babies. <laughs> 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 I, didn't, what? I didn't realize that I had sandwiched <laughs> the, 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 the switch. switch. We, we right, pl you planned this out so well. I just, I just, right. Do you do birthday Next parties? segment is Sword Fight. Sword Fight, obviously. <laughs> of course. Okay. Sword Fight, where Kyle and I argue about a very controversial subject. CRISPR babies. Uh, right? And we're going to argue about CRISPR babies. Go Kyle home, you drunk you <laughs> Now, clearly, clearly at this point, We've explained to you what, Chris, what CRISPR babies are and what they're capable of. Have we? Have now, we China started this, just to be clear. This is all China's, China's fault. fault. They China's, started it. China sucks. China's going to have uh, genetically modified superhuman babies. I don't know if they'll stay babies. That's, this is one thing that hasn't been clear, they, clarified to me. They could grow up to be So for the rest of this discussion, assume when, CRISPR we, adults. when we say babies, we mean they maybe start as babies. And maybe they're designed to stay as babies and be like super killer babies or something like that. That's totally possible. But assume that we're talking about babies that have grown to be adults. Sure. Okay. I'm with you, um, 100%. Now, obviously, we have to respond to this, right? So um, here's the straw poll that we're asking you guys to vote on. Now, we here in America, we take uh, defense very seriously. Uh, so U.S. scientists are going to need to respond to this. So when U.S. scientists create superhuman CRISPR babies. Sure. U.S. with, with American flags, of course, uh, to defend against the Chinese superhuman CRISPR babies in the wars to come, what special powers should they focus on giving them? Mm. Pretty straightforward. Mm. We, all, we all know special powers. Mm. CRISPR, obviously, special mm -hmm. powers, that's going to be the outcome. Mm. So mm -hmm. uh, we have mm -hmm. a bunch of options here. Now, I think, Kyle, what we should do, sure. since there are many options, and I, like I said, guys, there are many. I actually remembered to choose the thing that allows you to select multiple options here. So select <laughs> okay. the, Select the superpowers you think are most important. Sure. I think you and I should each choose three to mm. sort of create mm. our own version of a super-powered CRISPR baby. Okay. And then we'll sort of face them off against <clears throat> and see which, sure. which who, who maybe has the best one. Absolutely. Uh, so, 
Uh, and I had devised like a point system for like who had points, but uh, never mind that. It's too complicated. Okay. Uh, but what do, you, what do you think here? We got uh, in the wars to strength. come. I mean, Do-ability. telepathy. I have to. I have to say telepathy. All right, Kyle's got telepathy. I mean, being able to read someone's mind is of utmost importance in in order to win a war. It is. You, you can you can you can predict and anticipate their movements, their wants and desires. You can manipulate those desires and uh, you know to your own advantage. Um, you know, I think uh, I think being able to talk and to uh, and control animals right. is also very important. You know, you can use as a baby. You don't have uh, a whole lot of physical attributes. Of course, you could have super strength and, and, and visibility, as as Paul mentioned here. But I think even more effective. You know, even if you had super strength as a baby, it doesn't mean you have super speed. You could be super strong as a baby, but still move one mile an hour as you're crawling. You'd be like one punch man. One punch man, but but I mean, it takes you five hours to get to your victim. I mean, it's not it's not just because you have strength doesn't mean you have speed. People could just like walk away from you slowly. So talk to control, talk or to or control animals. Hear me out here. You can you you can summon bears. You can summon wolves. You can summon coyotes and and, and uh, poisonous centipedes. Mm-hmm. I, I do like the. I, 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 I did. I did notice the last option, and I was very tempted. It's a good one. But I think even beyond that, you want to be able to make people happy in a war. You have to know. Also make people happy. Because happiness choice. is really yeah. just happiness. What is happiness? Happiness mm-hmm. is just an abstraction. So if you can actually make people genuinely happy, and you can read their minds and know what 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 makes them tick, what makes them happy. That is the ultimate, that's the ultimate evil possession, is to know what makes people happy. That way you know exactly how to rip it out from under their feet and and and, and, and succeed and just completely obliterate all essence of hope in their lives. Because nothing nothing is more effective in a war than destroying one's hope. Yeah, because gotta, if there is no hope, demoralize the enemy. you have to demoralize them in every sense. Mm-hmm. So with the ability to control animals so that you they can take the brunt of the physical work and knowing what they know, knowing, believing, understanding how their mind works from a telepathic view and being able to make them happy in the first place to really, because the higher, you can only be brought down as, high, as much as you are up high. So if we can make people really happy initially, if you can make your enemy super happy, that that creates a greater delta of how much you can bring them down to the lowest low, and then you just have the fucking wolves attack, you know, at fucking dawn, and you're you're good to go. So that this is clearly a trifecta of of war strategy that I feel would be the most effective in yeah, pretty, in a battle like this. Pretty harsh, actually. Like. It's like you have to show them like the life that they could have and 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 everything, and then just, and just take just fucking take rip it away. away. Wow. Truly, yeah. Well, this is very savage AF. Yeah. Striking. All right. Um, I I obviously disagree with all of your choices. They're stupid. It's because you're wrong. And wrong. Uh, you're super wrong. Now, first off, the main thing you got to have is the healing, the healing power, because the healing capability. Is what gives you the uh, ability to uh, be resilient, to bounce back from encounters you might have, of course, but also the ability to survive potential other post-CRISPR uh, procedures that might that might occur. We all, of course, are familiar with Wolverine. It was his inherent mutant healing ability that allowed him to go through the Project X procedure, which uh, al- which gave him. The adamantium lace skeleton. skeleton and claws and everything. It's a damn good point. If he didn't have the healing, uh, there's no way he would have survived all that. So, good point. you know, there's a, there's a lot of flexibility there. It, it opens True. up a lot of doors. True. That's what I'm saying. True. Uh, now, you got to go with hand good lasers. Um, I mean, I, I, I shortened this to hand lasers, but I'm, I'm talking about, you know, being able to create some sort of a, a kinetic or uh, energy rich projectile from from the orifices of your body to, to shoot at people. I just think it's a it's a good general use Iron Man general action purpose going on. skill, right? You know, especially to have ranged. You got a range combat. Sure. Not everything can be handled sure. uh, in in the in the melee environment. Finally, mm. really good hair. Really good hair does help. I mean, if you try and like you got to you got to assume that there's going to be some sort of public aspect, you know, cuz you got a bunch of you got a bunch of superhumans. They were created in a lab and, and everything, and they're supposed to be uh, 
saving humanity. But their right? hair sucks. And obviously there's going to be some sort of reticence in the general public because people are going to be like, you know, are these people going to replace us? You know, do they think they're better than us somehow or something like that? You know, just some really good hair and, you know, like some presence there to have the ability to talk. You're going to communicate with the people. You're going to connect with them and you're going to help everyone know that you're there to help them. If you look at all the United well. States presidents, they've all had exceptional hair. George Washington. Abe Lincoln. Started the trendy, you know, longer on the top, shorter on the sides. Uh, Obama. Just, you know, just free-spirited. Just short it. Short it up. Cut it up. I mean, it's just, it's, it okay. is it's evidence. What? Right. Hard evidence. <laughs> That's all I got. Good. Good suggestion. I don't know why I'm arguing I'm on very, your I'm behalf. Very, I don't know why I'm arguing on your behalf. I'm very curious about the results. You're there. clearly wrong. Wow. Paul. This is such... See, it's split. <laughs> like, wait, what? It's really, really close. <laughs> this is what happens when you give right. them a thousand options. Well, obviously. Super intelligence. Super intelligence currently in first. Healing, though. All right. I win that one. Sure. Uh, super strength, of course. Uh, you got telepathy. That was, yeah, that was only one of a yours. percent behind. Visibility, invisibility. Oh, it was very. I was very close on that one. Yeah, that was a good one. You know, I'm kind of surprised that, and I think it was because it was lower down as flying. I think I thought flying might be a little bit higher up. Hand lasers, though, also really high yeah, up there. Yeah, pretty good. Super yeah, you, speed. you win, Paul. All right, so guys, we not this one. Obviously, this was uh, an exercise in in you know speculation, in science. But we will be using this to actually create a superhuman being in the future. So everyone, go ahead and continue to vote. Let us know what you think. Stay tuned for next episode. Most we present our prototype. Active. Yeah. All right, we got one more argument here for sword fight. This okay. One. It's a little bit more personal, Kyle. So All I'm right. afraid I'm not going to be able oh. to give you the option. Oh no. To choose because <laughs> I, I have. I can't even participate. Be, because I have choice number one, and you're going to be forced to defend yourself. Okay, right? sure. This is, this is the first time I've done. Wow. All right. So now, you guys maybe Options. if you watch the YouTube's and the tech channels have seen some of these recent Walmart PC videos, right? Uh, we Ridiculous. Got, we got Kyle's over here published uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. At, at 1.5 million views. Not too shabby, Kyle. Ra Raise the roof. Not too shabby at all there. I'm there, a 30, baller. 30,000 thumbs ups on that one there. Word. Uh, followed up, of course, uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus. He's and, beating and, me and at 1.6. 1.6, my God. Well, I feel like such a sucker. In his defense, he did have the, uh, actual, the actual PC. The actual PC there. I feel pretty good was, about getting 1.5 yeah. off of just the screen cap. And you have, Kyle has a follow up too. I do have a follow up. Where he actually did get the PC as well. I do have a follow up. Which I was actually kind of hoping you would do. Yeah. Which is already at 700K. Now, here's the thing. Something like that. You might look at this. You might look at this and think to yourself, you know what? What a wonderful world. You know, Kyle and Steve are providing a service to everyone. Here's here's Kyle's follow up. The fourteen hundred dollars so uh, Walmart gaming PC. Seven thirty. Providing providing a service to everyone. You know, taking this PC and opening it up and showing the internals. Anyone who might have been fooled by going to Walmart and everything. Mm -hmm. I think that's not the case. I think that's oh. a lie. Oh. I think that is false. Something more scandalous. And I'll present to you foot. guys right now what is my theory about what is going on here. Oh geez. Walmart. Walmart's not going to sell gaming PCs. They're no? not going to make money selling gaming PCs. They know this. Walmart is a. They're they're a large company. They have lots of stores. Okay. They have a basic idea of like who their customers are and who their customers aren't. Sure. I think this all was a setup. Complete setup. Definitely. Obviously, Walmart has paid off Kyle and paid off Steve to create these videos. Sounds legit. And they're sharing the ad revenue from them. We are drowning yeah. in money, in Walmart money. Exactly. Because obviously that, you, that sweet, sweet YouTube money, that's how it comes through. So Walmart was like, hey, Steve, hey, Kyle. We're going to make some really, really shitty PCs. You guys tear them up. Obviously, people eat that up right now. Yep. And, uh, you know, everyone wins. You know, we get a little, we get a little paper on the, on, the, uh, on the comeback, and you guys uh, get, get to have the benefit. Walmart, like, Walmart paid oh me. Oh, my gosh, these Walmart PCs, nobody buy them. Oh, no. As if everyone was even going to do that in the first place. I will admit Walmart paid me and Steve big bucks to talk Major shit they, they, on their, you guys on their heard new it gaming here. PCs. Well, What's that? to be to be clear, collaborative effort. To be clear, what you're supposed to be no. arguing? Oh, 
Dude, no. I am arguing that Jay this is a massive conspiracy that Kelsey K. and Walmart are all in on. No, people just like watching a new category of video called PC build cringe porn, which is clearly the obvious answer to all of this yeah. nonsense. People like watching things that suck. People who are really bad at building computers. It started with Verge. Yeah. It started with The Verge. It did start with The Verge. This is where this all originated. I mean, I, I made a video on The Verge PC and it blew up more than any other video that I have done on a successful PC build. Where I'm like, PC of the month, this PC is amazing. PC of the month, this PC is literally perfect in every way. Jack shit views compared to any disaster build that you've ever seen The Verge do or Walmart do. Uh, you know, and you don't you don't tune into the news. My grandparents don't tune into the news every five every day at five p.m. to be like, "What's going right with the world today?" No, everyone wants to see the catastrophe, the, the child that's been abducted, or the, the crime scene that happened at the local grocery store, or you know the the car chase that uh, the cops have been after for hours. So you know, it's a uh, it's a human nature. Human nature. We are naturally attracted to. Uh, fuck uppery to chaos, and so Steve and I have just managed to find a way to capitalize on that. And Paul's just simply jealous of all of our hard-earned success. Well, I never, I never denied that. <laughs> never at all. I'm, I'm just trying to straight from the horses. I'm just trying to, trying to dig down to the source so I can uh, profit. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> but all right. Thank you, Kyle. That was a very, very honest and straightforward <laughs> response and everything there. And it appears that you are correct. Yes! People just like watching shitty PC builds and people who actually have, a, have an idea of what they're doing be like, no, this is wrong and bad and shitty. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> do this. Uh, this category is being added to Pornhub as we speak. Oh, yeah. As a, people, as a, as a new ca- People as a really new get off on that kind of thing. Absolutely. All right. Guys, uh, that wraps up for my half of the show. Hey Thank you all so much for watching. We still have... And after party? After party. Link to the description. So if you're watching live, uh, join us there. If you're Do watching it. on Twitch, stay right where you are. If you're watching on YouTube in the future, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you are a fantastic person, like, wait, I want to give a shout out. Wait, I, shout it out. I want to give a shout out to Dude. You should too, because he's been doing your videos as well. Oh, the uh, time stamper. Yeah, time, correct. Uh, yeah, I want to double check and make sure I get to. <laughs> Ah. What's his name? Your Everyday Tech. Yes. Your Everyday Tech has been doing timestamps for both of our sides. You've been killing it, For sir. several weeks here, very consistently, so big thank you to you. Thank you very uh, much. For doing that. To you and anyone else who decides to, to take on that uh, uh, as a responsibility, we very much appreciate it. We as do. As well as anyone who watches our videos and wants to skip past all of the random nonsense to actually... Indeed. The good stuff? Do we talk... Anyway. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Thanks for watching Awesome Hardware, guys. We'll be right back with the after party. Bye.